Corey LaJoy has been fired by Spire Motorsports, effective at the end of the season. What brought about this drastic change? And who joins Spire Motorsports in the number seven car? Kyle Busch, maybe? Hi, 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 push it, push it, push it, push it, check your bike, hell yeah! What's the caution for, mate? Can I not push it in? Stop anybody. Wow! Yeah! Oh, he's going! Woo! Way to go, boys! One hell of a job, man, one hell of a job! Thank you so much. Corey LaJoy just went from stacking pennies to potentially flipping burgers next season. Dead serious. Welcome on into Shifting Gears. I am Alan Bailey. I'm not going to sit here and say I told you so, but I kind of told you so just a few episodes ago. Now those expectations of Corey LaJoy being a very good driver, building your program around, are starting to look a little sus. And frankly, he's entering his last year, his last year on his contract, and Spire more or less is looking at him going, hey bud, one last year, yeah, you better go out there and deliver, and if you don't, yeah, out. And yeah, if I'm Spire Motorsports, I want Kyle Busch in my car. It's almost like I knew what I was talking about when I said that. I'm telling you, you've got to mash that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you do not miss a video. And of course, always log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Let's actually go through Corey LaJoy's stats, and you tell me why Spire Motorsports let him go on his day off during the break. I mean, the dude literally got fired on his vacation. Like, that's how bad he is right now. In the 129 races so far that he's run for Spire Motorsports, he only has four top five finishes and six top tens. Now, the last time he finished in the top five was actually the Daytona 500 last year, 2023, and he hasn't finished in the top ten since. That's incredibly bad. In the four years he's been with the seven car, the only time he finishes in the top five and is actually in contention is at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Talladega Super Speedway, and Daytona, all of the restrictor plate tracks. This guy is literally the new Michael Waltrip, only has a decent showing on the plate tracks, and that's just the great equalizer. It, it just proves that this guy isn't living up to the potential, and coming into the Cup Series, pre-Cup Series, he had a lot of potential. He was the guy who was outperforming future cup champs. He was outperforming the uh, Chase Elliott's and the Ryan Blaney's on the short tracks, and it was like, okay, this guy's a future cup champ, Where's he going to land? And he bounced around a lot to a couple of not great teams, let's just say, ended up at Spire, literally the first or second employee ever hired at Spire Motorsports, and then they start building this team around him. It felt like his home. It felt like, hey, this guy is going to go from a field filler, back of the field guy, to potentially playoff contender and potentially... Um, champion one day with this organization. They had immense support from Gamebridge. Massive, massive, massive sponsorship. Heck, they just bought Kyle Busch Motorsports uh, for the 2024 season um, for $14.5 million for the building, but also for the Truck Series assets. And they started a Truck Series program. And that program's going beautifully right now. It's, it's looking really good. They started the season by winning the first, what was it, four or five races? Just absolutely came out of the gate swinging and just dominating and the one guy the one guy who hasn't performed is Corey LaJoy over there you had Carson Hosevar come over to the 77 and the 77 has always been that cup series program that let's just say isn't getting the best support right now they're getting kind of the leftovers of the seven car or at least they were last season this season the 77's outperformed Carson's gone up there and he's gotten top tens and way outperformed Corey LaJoy in similar equipment. And he's a rookie, so it really put the pressure on Corey LaJoy. And I kind of saw the writing on the wall coming with this one because uh, when they signed Rodney Childress to be the crew chief of the seven car, they phrased it that way. They didn't say the normal PR line. The normal PR line is, hey, we hired Rodney Childress to be the crew chief for Corey LaJoy for years to come. No, they didn't say that. They said in the press release and in all the artwork that they put on social media at the time, Rodney Childress to be the crew chief of the number seven for years to come. 
Corey's name was suspiciously absent. Yes, it was in the press release that was sent out to the press, but all of the verbiage and all of the artwork and everything that was put out there was not mentioning Corey LaJoy. That was clue number one. This has been in the works for a hot damn minute. And honestly, I think that this has been a long time coming. I, I really do think this. I think once Carson got in there and started out performing, it was the ticking time bomb on the Corey LaJoy experiment. And it ultimately means he's done. He's a guy who's been 28th to 30th uh, all season in points. He's being outperformed by Carson, his teammate. And, oh, by the way, you also have uh, Zane Smith in the number 71, who has had a couple of top five finishes, top 10 finishes in that 71 car this year in essentially a brand new third team. He's outperforming uh, Corey LaJoy. So just overall, it, it's not a good look for Corey. He's been struggling. And even when he hopped into the nine car last year, substituting for the suspended, um, uh, 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 excuse me, Chase Elliott, he didn't live up to the expectations. All of this hype, it's like, hey, this is your big chance. And Everybody kind of blamed it on the track, blamed it on the fact that the nine car wasn't competitive at that track last year, and it, it kind of proved to me, hey, this is a guy who's not living up to the expectations, he's not performing under pressure for whatever reason, and he never has been good in the Cup Series. He's been struggling, frankly, and was he rushed up to Cup? I don't think so. I just think he's been with not great organizations, and he's never been in the right headspace, I think. I think he's been a guy who has always struggled and doesn't know what it's like to seriously contend for a top 10 or a top 5, because when he does, he either shoots himself in the foot or gets really lucky at a plate track, and he needs to get into the right headspace. Is there a space in the Cup Series for him in 2025? I don't know, but he had a contract that was good for the 2025 season, and GameBridge essentially bought him out and said, hey, no, you're not back next year. But it does sincerely come with auspicious timing because this comes two weeks after Corey LaJoy dumps Kyle Busch at Pocono, sets off a massive chain reaction that causes the big one out at Pocono, and... Corey didn't do the right thing. Stand up and say, hey, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. He doubled and tripled down multiple times saying it was Kyle Busch's fault. Kyle Busch wrecked himself. Um, and he kept changing his story, honestly. He reached out to Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch denied those phone calls. And really, he just kept feeding this lie of, oh, it's all Kyle Busch's fault. Kyle Busch went on the Pat McAfee show uh, a few days after the incident and basically said, he's a liar, payback's coming, I'm going to come get him, and Kyle Busch is 100% right. Corey LaJoy changed his story a couple of times um, on the air with cameras, with a microphone in his face, and I don't know why you would do that. It's not like these things record and have a memory, and this stuff gets post posted online, and it lives forever, Corey. This might be hint number one, bud. I'm just saying, and it's just, it's just not good. Now, there's a lot happening over at Spire. You have Michael McDowell heading over there next year uh, to the number 71. They're high, they hired him to kind of build this program up. So there is the potential that Michael McDowell could end up in the number 7 car with Rodney Childers. That's actually a really great pairing, I think, because you have two guys who are known for building um, championship organizations or championship playoff contending organizations from nothing. Putting these two together might sincerely be extremely dangerous for everyone else in the field. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily that that that's kind of like supercharging one team. And that's not a bad thing if I'm Spire. It really isn't. I would really seriously, if I'm in charge of Spire, consider moving Michael McDowell to the seven car with Rodney Childress. And then the question becomes who goes into the number 71 next year? The obvious choice to be the third driver over there at Spire that is, mm, honestly, I'm, I'm not going to say probably going to happen, but it's the easiest, cheapest, smartest way to do it, is simply leaving Zane Smith in the number 71 for next year. He is on loan from Trackhouse to be in that number 71 because Trackhouse doesn't have a spot for them, for him on the Cup Series program because they don't have that many charters. Um, and Zane was kind of loaned out on a one-year deal to Spire, and it, it kind of makes sense, honestly, because if I'm Spire, 
I don't have to pay a guy to be in that number 71, but I reap all the benefits of keeping the prize money, getting all those top fives. And honestly, I think Zane is starting to show some uh, real potential in that number 71. And I think it's Zane getting used to the car. I think it's that team starting to gel, but I also think it's everything just coming together. And they're in a decent spot. I would keep the 71 almost as is with Zane Smith as the driver, move Michael McDowell to the seven car, problem solved. That is a very, very, very strong possibility. But if I'm thinking long term, and I know Kyle Busch fans really, 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 really want to hear this, and I really do think that this is a possibility, Kyle Busch to Spire Motorsports next year. It would be really good for Kyle Busch. Really good for Kyle Busch. And can you imagine, sincerely, imagine this. Kyle Busch and Rodney Childers coming together to be on the seven car. That's a recipe for sincere, sincere domination, I think, because you have Rodney, who's like an old school short track guy who, frankly, is a racer. I think racer, you see a picture of Rodney Childers. You think Kyle Busch, I think badass racer. These guys are very similar. They're going to headbutt if they end up getting together. And I honestly think it's a question of when does Kyle Busch leave RCR, not does he leave RCR? He's extremely unhappy over there right now. Their program is spiraling. RCR has kind of promised, oh, there's big changes coming next year, personnel changes. But he's also the guy who goes on stage with uh, political candidates who are known for being controversial and known for having criminal activity that they have been convicted for, um, including uh, uh, rape and other things. And I don't think that that's a real good use of Richard Childress's time and money. Yes, he loves to throw his money around at political causes and things like this. And it everybody online really got after the guy last night when he did this, saying basically, hey, focus on your Cup Series program that's doing awful instead of going out there and playing politics. And that's exactly what he was doing last night. He was playing politics. He did the exact same thing earlier this year. And that's where RCR's head's at right now. He's not in this game. He, I, I don't think he's been in the game of making his cars faster for decades at this point, sincerely. Not since uh, Kevin Harvick left the organization uh, in the mid-2010s. So I, I don't think, honestly, that RCR's ever going to turn it around. You have Austin Dillon in the three car for crying out loud. And while he has flashes of brilliance, it's never been consistent. And... Even with Tyler Rennick in the eight car before that, and then Kyle Busch, you have a program that is spiraling, that is actively getting less and less support from Chevy because they're having less and less confidence in the people in that building. And now there's no clear leadership over there because of letting go of Andy Petrie. It's kind of very inconsistent, and there hasn't been a clear succession line over there, and Honestly, hiring Rodney Childers would have turned that organization around, but they didn't have the money. And now I think that Kyle Busch does need to get out of there. He does already have a very well-established relationship with Spire Motorsports. They bought his organization out, and he ran a couple truck races for them earlier this year and will continue to run truck races for them because of this relationship that they have. Kyle Busch can't go out and start talking to teams, unfortunately, per his contract with RCR. It prohibits him from doing that. But my my entire thing with that is basically prove it. Prove that Kyle Busch had a conversation with Spire Motorsports on what day. Yes, you could pull phone records, but is RCR really going to get decent lawyers right now? Really? Um, Spire has significantly more resources right now than RCR does. And if anyone, anyone can buy Kyle Busch out of his final year of his contract, it is certainly GameBridge and Spire Motorsports. And I think it's going to happen. I really, truly do. Kyle Busch is unhappy over there. They need a driver in that seven car. And honestly, picture Spire Motorsports, the potential of a Spire Motorsports with Kyle Busch next year in the car. You have Kyle Busch and Rodney Childers in the seven car. 
that is going to be very potent once they start building their notebooks, sincerely. You have uh, Michael McDowell in the number 71. Again, another guy who's going to be extremely fast and extremely potent once they start to gel. And you have Carson Hosevar, who's the young hotshot rookie who, frankly, has made that 77 car his own and is sincerely showing very promising speed. You got to watch out for this kid. I really do think that this kid is going to be a top 10 threat week in and week out within the next year or two in that number 77 car for Spire Motorsports. Great, great, great hire on their part. And maybe Corey LaJoy was the piece that was holding back Spire Motorsports. They certainly think so. They let him go. And I got to wonder, honestly, if it's going to happen. Um, I hope so, honestly, for Kyle Busch fans and for Kyle Busch, because he frankly deserves a more quality equipment car. And RCR is not it. It really isn't. Chevy wants Kyle Busch in a Chevy, and I do think that this is the best fit. But I want to hear from you. What do you think about Corey LaJoy being fired from Spire Motorsports effective at the end of the 2024 season and the potential of maybe Kyle Busch heading over to Spire Motorsports in 2025? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I want to thank you so much for watching. The channel just hit 8 thousand subscribers big milestone for us we are literally in the middle of our most successful month on the channel in the channel's four-year history and i sincerely want to take a moment and thank you for that you made this happen and truly it's coming at a time when my wife and i could really use the support and you guys have stepped it up so sincerely from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you thank you thank you so much i know we're entering the two-week break we've got some great content coming here on the channel i'm actually filming some stuff right after this video this video kind of came out of nowhere so it throws our our video schedule a little out of whack but that's okay it's a great problem to have uh but I, I'm very excited for what the future holds. Because of the success of this channel over the course of the last month, I've been able to devote more time to YouTube, um, which is just going to create more content for you guys. And let me know in the comments down below, what do you want to see here on the channel? We also have the Team Chaos eSport channel where we're very much having some fun. We're putting out uh, the NASCAR 24 series as well as the uh, NASCAR Heat 5 mod career mode, which I'm having a blast with. I love that game, even though it's four years old. I'm still having a blast with that game. Uh, and we have the Chaos Media channel with the link in the description below, uh, where we're really focusing on video essays of nerdy things. Um, it's cartoons, it's anime, it's movie reviews, um, but it's also Pokemon cards and uh, Pokemon uh, memorabilia and things like that that we're having some fun with. So go check out those channels. The links are in the description below. But for Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.